What causes glaucoma? It's a really great question asked by many of my patients. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Saya Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and I'm a glaucoma specialist and you're watching the ifacts.com channel. Today, we are gonna talk about what actually causes glaucoma. So let's dive in. Number one is age. Very simply put, we see a lot more glaucoma in later decades of life. This means that across all populations, there's a higher prevalence of glaucoma in your 70s versus your 60s, higher in your 60s versus your 50s, and so on and so forth. In populations who have Hispanic or African-American ancestry, we sometimes also see glaucoma happening at a younger age. In general, however, glaucoma is not that common below the age of 40, but the rate is not zero, and I do have a very small handful of patients in my practice who are being treated that are in their 20s and 30s, but it is definitely not the majority of patients. Number two is family history. Now, if you have a first degree family member who has glaucoma, your likelihood of developing glaucoma is higher than the general population or higher than someone who has no family history of glaucoma. If your biological parent has glaucoma, that is very important information for you to tell your eye doctor. If you're also able to find out what age this person was diagnosed with glaucoma at, this is also pretty helpful information. A family history of a parent that got glaucoma when they were 85 years old is quite different than a family history of a patient who had a parent that had glaucoma diagnosed in their 50s. In some families, certain gene mutations can also predispose people to getting this disease. Before we get to the end of the list, do us a favor and hit the like and subscribe button below so we can keep creating educational content to help you keep your eyes healthy. Number three on this list is having associated health problems. There are a few different chronic health problems that are associated with getting glaucoma. One highly associated medical condition is one that you've definitely heard of and that is diabetes. Another one that is less commonly well known is having obstructive sleep apnea. This is why it's important to have a regular PCP or primary care physician who is monitoring you for these different chronic health conditions. Now, although there are chronic medical problems that are associated with glaucoma, it is really, really important for you to know that a completely healthy person who has absolutely no medical problems whatsoever can also develop glaucoma. This is why they call it the silent thief of vision because healthy patients are not often prompted to see the eye doctor because their central vision is good and they don't take any medications for anything else. And so relatively their risk might be lower. However, because glaucoma can happen in anyone and early glaucoma is asymptomatic, they may have no clue that it's slowly robbing them of their vision. Because patients with diabetes are often prompted by their primary care doctor to see the eye doctor for a retinal exam, glaucoma specialists and ophthalmologists often will pick up glaucoma while they're looking for diabetic retinopathy. So this is just a friendly reminder to always have an eye health exam, especially if you're over the age of 40, even if you are otherwise healthy. Another potential cause of glaucoma is having a previous history of eye trauma or eye inflammation. Now, if you were in a car accident or you played a sport where your eye or your head was injured, or you had any sort of trauma to the face near your eye, you are at risk for getting glaucoma on that side. Now, oddly enough, this can happen within a year of the injury. It can also happen many, many years later. In terms of eye inflammation, when patients have a disease called uveitis, this can put them at risk for developing glaucoma as well. Number five on our list is the use of steroid eye drops. There is a medical term that ophthalmologists use, and that is called being a steroid responder. Some patients can have an increase in eye pressure from chronic steroid use. Now, if a patient is a steroid responder, you will see their eye pressure go up usually within a few weeks of using the steroid. And typically once the steroid is removed, you should see the eye pressure go down. However, there are some medical conditions where the steroid use is an important part of treating a different eye disease. And in these cases, the ophthalmologist may also give you eye pressure lowering drops alongside the steroid drops and also monitor you for glaucoma. Number six on this list is your racial and ethnic background. There's another video on this channel that goes into how race can impact you getting different eye diseases, including glaucoma, macular degeneration, myopia, keratoconus, as well as cataracts. So you can check that video out if you're interested. Specifically for primary open angle glaucoma, we know that anyone who is of African-American ancestry or anyone of Hispanic ancestry is at a higher risk than anyone who is Caucasian for primary open angle glaucoma. For angle closure glaucoma, we do see an increased prevalence in patients who are of East Asian descent. 
But this being said, any person with any background can get glaucoma. So again, screening is very important. So what does all of this mean? This really means that glaucoma is a multifactorial disease. It's usually tough to figure out one specific reason a person may have developed glaucoma unless there is a clear history of trauma or there's a really, really strong family history. This is why having a check-in with your eye doctor who can screen you for glaucoma and follow you if you're a glaucoma suspect is so important. There is good data to show that early detection and management of glaucoma leads to better visual outcomes. So bottom line, if you haven't had a dilated eye exam in a while, be sure to schedule one with your ophthalmologist so they can take a look at not just your eye pressure, but the health of your optic nerve. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.